Okay. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, I know some people are going to trickle in, but we may as well get started. We have Chirag from Biconomy, who's going to give a high level workshop on how to integrate Biconomy into your hack. And today we're going to cover some subtopics such as meta transactions and cross chain transfers. If you have questions for Chirag, uh, please save them for the end and we'll have a question and answer period as soon as he's finished his workshop or presentation. Yep. Okay, I'll let you take it away. Thanks, Chirag. Uh, hi, hello everyone. Uh, thank you, Heather and Andrew, uh, for having me here today. And very excited and proud to uh, you know, present uh, at this event. And let's, let's get started. So basically I'm going to be talking about uh, Biconomy, which is uh, multi-chain uh, transaction infrastructure. So there are so many infrastructure projects to bring, uh, you know, DeFi closer to like uh, drive more adoption uh, on the usability side. So I'm going to be covering uh, these topics uh, to like broadly start with, uh, you know, some of the challenges and uh, how do you, you know, improve the experience and drive more users for your hack. So that's the idea and. Uh, Biconomy allows you to do a lot of uh, cool stuff by, uh, you know, if you are a DApp developer, you can integrate from like multiple different approaches and uh, make the user journey as uh, easy as possible for any of your hacks. So let me go ahead and share my screen quickly. All right, sweet. So Biconomy is a uh, transaction infrastructure for, uh, you know, it doesn't matter which chain you are developing on and you want to simplify the user journey and reduce uh, some of the friction points in your DAP, uh, then it has like SDK and API solutions. So I'm going to walk through the workshop of integration. So it will be like uh, more on the technical level, but let me just come back first and, uh, you know, start with the challenges and how uh, do we like, you know, end up here or realize the need of uh, uh, having a, a, you know, transaction layer in uh, improving usability of the applications. So, let's get started, sweet. All right, here are some stats on DeFi. So there are plenty of use cases and very impressive projects that have come out of uh, different hackathons. Uh, and since the DeFi summer, the volumes have been increasing, uh, number of users and taps have been increasing. And uh, still, like, if you want to, you know, uh, like, get your project to the, uh, like, next level and have more and more users, there are still some challenges at the, uh, uh, at the interaction level or the number of steps uh, involved when users are interacting with your DAP. So, uh, so, like, this says that even if you have, like, a best UI, and the user experience in terms of uh, the other interactions, which are not Web3, uh, but uh, the blockchain interactions still turn out to be a very big pain point for the users. Uh, for here are some examples, like you need to pay the gas fees. Uh, uh, I need to like download a wallet and I need to understand that, okay, this is a native currency for this particular blockchain and you could be building on any chain. And I need to set the gas price for the chain and I need to worry about, you know, resubmitting the transactions, whether my transition will succeed or fail, or I'll have to, uh, you know, I'll miss out a particular chance if, let's say, if you are trading. And there are a couple of other pain points, uh, which I'm going to talk about in the next slides. So you can have like, uh, another aspect is like you, when you want to like go from one layer to another layer to, to, you know, interact with a particular app of your choice, be it like a gaming use case or a social use case uh, for which like layer twos are very popular. So then like in order to move your funds, these, uh, there are like very long processes or you have like wait time is very long for you to, you know, actually be able to uh, do something on those apps. 
So this is an idea where like you think of DeFi as a highway and there are various checkpoints where you need to like stop and you know pay for the gas fees and gas fees is just one of the things where like user needs to understand but uh, there are some other pain points in terms of you can think of different use cases where uh, you know it's going to be hindrance for the users. So the idea is, uh, and before I talk about usability, so this is the idea, like since 2017, uh, we have seen the market rise and after the network congestion. Uh, so for blockchains to like grow in the next, uh, you know, rapid growth, uh, growth cycle, uh, there are key challenges like scalability. So there are so many layer to solutions, optimistic rollups, Arbitrum are in the space now. So there is a very good progress there. And second is interoperability, where you need to like move from one chain to another chain and uh, do the cross-chain swaps or cross-chain, uh, you know, smart contract calls. And the, these can be like uh, a big challenge in like several use cases where, uh, you know, the user is not like blockchain or network agnostic or your application itself. And the third important uh, aspect is usability. So that's uh, the pain points which I just talked about and I'm going to talk more about that followed by uh, you know high level workshop for integration with Bikeonomics. So uh, these are uh, the goals in terms of uh, when you think about user adoption for your DApps where uh, you basically need to like capture the market of users uh, which are like not crypto savvy and you can also delight the users which are you know, used to interact on DeFi protocols, but you give them more options based on their use cases. So that's the idea or like throughout this workshop, you should think about uh, some design, uh, you know, ideology or principles and also think of usability when you are building something. Uh, so these are the pain points and you can, uh, you know, these should be the goals to give the Web2 like experiences, for example, Amazon or uh, any other Web2 space application on uh, Web3 layer. So that's the idea. And Bikonomy is a transaction infrastructure for, uh, uh, you know, uh, like multi-chain uh, doing the so and, and it is achieved by meta transactions. And there are some other offerings where you can, you know, integrate and delight the users. And so besides that, like in terms of pain points, uh, I forgot to add that, uh, Let's say since, so if we talk about usability in, uh, so before there used to be like, you know, long hexadecimal addresses, user needs to remember their address and share it with someone. So there have been some progress in uh, Ethereum domain name service where you can like link your domain uh, with your Ethereum address. And it is uh, way easier to, you know, give out to someone and not remember your whole address. Uh, so that's that's on the addresses level, and then on the wallet level, there are some solutions out there, uh, like Wallet Connect or Magic Wallet, which allows you to, uh, you know, interact with any app from your mobile phones. Uh, you can share a QR code, or you can have a decentralized identity uh, without having the complexity of having a browser extension and these sort of things. So these are like owning your UX on the wallet level, and apart from that. Uh, what we are doing is on the transaction level. Uh, so on the transaction layer, there are some pain points and if you can like, uh, you know, simplify those experiences. So that, that's the key idea. And let me give you some more examples. So let's say if you, uh, if you are a freelancer and you have not worked with uh, DeFi or blockchains before and you earn some USDT from a, uh, crypto client and you need to you know transfer this USDT and you don't you do not have an ethereum and you know uh, don't know about like how to uh, set up set gas prices uh, how to download the wallet etc so I need to go and uh, you know make this whole round trip of going to an exchange buying ETH and then this poor guy will possibly you know make uh, uh, Uniswap trade to convert this USDT into ETH by having those ETH and what if the deadline expires then the transaction also uh, gets dumped by wasting the gas fees so here are like multiple challenges can be thought about uh with bikonomy integration in your dap it says few lines of code and uh, some amount of that uh, like registering your artifacts on the dashboard 
So I'm going to cover those steps, like what you need to do in order to have a gasless experience for your users. So that's the first key aspect of offering a gasless or a sponsored transactions by your DAP to the users. So, uh, and it is very cheap on the layer tools, uh, and you can like uh, you know uh, sponsor plenty of transactions and uh, drive more user base for your use case. And the features are like there are gas optimized transactions. There won't be like any pending transactions. Uh, you get to uh, you know uh, you get to own or know more insight about the transactions that are going through your DAP. You can have the user limits. You can have the meta transaction limits, and uh, uh, sort of control your data, which is uh, of the user interacting on the application. So this is just. Uh, uh, you know, another uh, like infographic to uh, showcase like what are the uh, benefits of using uh, or having like few lines of code uh, for like any layer. And there are many supported networks. So it's multi-chain and network agnostic. So even if user is on the uh, Ethereum main network, they uh, on MetaMask or any wallet, they can uh, directly integrate with uh, or interact with uh, DAP on the Polygon mainnet, Polygon Mumbai, et cetera. And this, that is the idea. Like user just signs, uh, you know, kind of messages, and these messages are being like exchanged with each other. Uh, and there will be like a third-party relayer, which will actually pay on behalf of the user. All uh, the, uh, it can like drive many jobs, which uh, let's say you want to set a particular constant or update something in your smart contract, or uh, uh, you can have like you know, any DeFi job to provide liquidity or you want to like run a bot and, uh, you know, manage your transactions through a dedicated relayer. So that relayer infrastructure is pretty scalable. And this is the idea of, uh, uh, you know, on a technical level, like you need, uh, there is a, there will be a transaction signer, which is the end user. And then they will just see the, uh, you know, structured message in their browser or uh, in their wallet app which uh, they can sign to like sort of prove their identity and that's it. So after that, they do not need to worry about the transaction. So transition is going to be relayed by a relayer. And uh, there are so many things which are happening uh, behind the scene. Like, for example, you need to be managing nonces. You need to have uh, like a resubmit module to submit the failed transactions. You need to monitor the gas prices. Uh, and you need to bump up the gas prices. So all of this is being handled by Biconomy in the back end. Uh, so once the user sends a transaction, it comes to a generic trusted forwarder. So this is more standardized approach. You can have like different custom approach as well, where uh, basically user just like uh, says that, okay, this is a, my smart contract. This is the method I want my users to call and be you know, meta transaction compliant or enabled and uh, that's it. So it appends the user's address and uh, it retrieves that address in the smart contract in your recipient contract and it just verifies that whether it is from the right user so that's the signature verification and uh, another is the nonce verification for replay protection attacks so uh, that's the first step like you need to modify your recipient contract to have this message center feature so that it can uh, uh, you know realize whether it is a it is coming from a relayer or an end user uh, so this is the idea and in terms of like integration with Biconomy, so there are three crucial steps where uh, first step, which I have, as I mentioned, that you need to uh, make the changes in your smart contract. And second thing is you need to register the artifacts on the dashboard. So by artifacts, I mean uh, you need to uh, add your smart contract and you need to specify that, okay, which uh, method or which type of meta transactions uh, you want uh, for for this particular contract or its methods. And then you sort of like register all of those methods in the dashboard and that's it. Then you are done. You get the API key, which you can use uh, in your backend code integration. So I'm going to show that part of the code to uh, maybe like a pull request or the code example. And so that's the third step where you basically use the Biconomy SDK and you can also have an API integration where you can just directly make an API for your transaction call. So user just, uh, uh, you know, signs a message from your front end, or they can also, it can also be done using a private key in the back end. So these are the steps uh, which I'm going to show uh, in moving forward. 
So in terms of uh, changing the, uh, let me go to the slide, yeah. So here, Uh, so this is the example of the changes you need to make on the smart contract, which is the first step where this is a very simple contract where it maintains the storage variable code and uh, user can uh, any user can come in and like set this particular storage variable and become the owner for the particular code. Uh, so this is the contract before and uh, these are the additions with uh, if you want to like make the contract meta transaction compliant so you need to uh, inherit from like uh, uh, a certain contract it can be base relay recipient or eap712 meta transaction uh, so yeah it, which allows uh, uh, you know to like sort of like verify the nonces and verify the signature so that's uh, that's what like and it, and it allows the support for the trusted forwarder and the uh, forwarder's job is just to verify the signature uh, and the nonces so you need to be uh, just make these uh, small changes in your contract and uh, wherever you are using message dot sender you need to replace it with like underscore message sender and that's it you're done for the first step and this is just one time uh, the second step would be to uh, like I said, to the dashboard registrations. So if you go to the website, you can go to the dashboard from here and you can like create. Okay. So you can create any new DAP with your name and you can pick a network that you want to, you know, uh, that your DAP is on and or whichever project you're building, you can give it a name and these are the steps to integrate a smart contract. So you give the contract a name, you paste the API. So uh, all of this, uh, uh, you know, I have done from the backend code here. So I'm going to paste the API, I can paste the smart contract address. And uh, with that, like I can specify the approach. So there are different approaches. Trusted forwarder is more generic approach for like access transactions and ELC20 forwarder is something that allows end user to pay gas fees and stable coins. So shortly I'll come back to that also. Uh, so once you register your contract, then you can go ahead and uh, register your methods. So let me just show for existing tab. So these are the steps involved in like in terms of registering methods and your artifacts. So that's the second step and that we have covered. And the third step is to sort of like write or like modify your code to use the Biconomy uh, API key. So the idea is like what's happening in the SDK is when you send uh, RPC call to uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, to send out any transactions. So uh, SDK is going to like, you, you can replace that provider, what, whichever provider you are creating for the network with the Biconomy uh, provider by using the Biconomy's API key. And once you have that provider, you can create your contracts using the new provider. And when you send uh, RPC call, each send transaction, it's going to intercept that RPC call. And it checks the you know artifacts or registrations on the dashboard. And accordingly, it sends that API call to the server. And then everything is managed by the relayer infrastructure there in uh, where we talk about like the submitting transactions or the nonce management or and ultimately getting the hash risk transaction hash response back so you can show your end user then you can uh, enable any watcher you can pretty much do like other composable stuff in the DeFi. uh so getting the subscription for block native or reading the data from graph for the particular transaction uh so that's that's the idea so uh ultimately you get like the receipt and the transaction hash and so this is the code which uh, shows the integration part. So you need to have like uh, your contract object, you create by Konami by using the API key, which you get in the dashboard. So that's like two lines of code. And then you replace your web three with the by Konami object you have just created. And once the by Konami is ready, you can initialize your contracts, uh, whichever you know operations you're doing in your uh, uh, app in the backend. So, this is uh, this is all you need to do in the client side. And let's say if I'm sending a transaction uh, using like, uh, uh, yeah. So if I'm sending a transaction like, you know, populating 
populating for a, a data for a particular method and then I'm sending a transaction. So the, this code also remains the same. You don't need to change anything. It will just, uh, uh, you know, ask user for the signature. So everything happens at the back end and uh, uh, at the end, end user will not, uh, you know, end up paying for the gas fee. So uh, this this is the gasless use case where you can sponsor uh, the gas fees on behalf of your users. So this is just the third step, and uh, you can play around with this uh, demo. So it is hosted, and uh, there are several variations there in the uh, playground branch, which I'm going to share as part of resources and. If any questions, you can come back to us on Discord. So this was the uh, this was to you know basically showcase uh, how to integrate Pyconomy in a very uh, simplistic use case for uh, for this app. And besides that, uh, what you also can do is so for on some layer ones, it does it probably doesn't make sense to. You know, sponsor the gas fees on behalf of your end user or what you can do is like enable a switch where gas prices are very low or you can have like a happy hours thing where uh, for that time you are sponsoring gas fees for your users and for other times you can allow users to you know uh, pay gas fees uh, from that side so in this case gasless is not free right uh, so you need to like pay something but if you do not have ethereum then you are also allowed to pay these gas fees in erc20 stable coins so uh, whatever supported tokens you have as a, uh, you know, uh, as allowed fee tokens for ERC20 uh, forwarder contracts. So that's the idea. Like you still have the trusted forwarder, which still verifies the signature and uh, verifies the nonsense. But you, what you also have is an ERC20 forwarder, which, uh, you know, facilitates as a fee calculator. So for example, I am calling a certain method on my smart contract and, uh, uh, there is X amount of execution gas for this method call. So what uh, what this contract does is it calculates that okay this many this much uh, let's say 200k amount of gas is going to be uh, spent for this transaction. So basically it calculates all of these ETH amount uh, into ERC20 token amount and uh, identifies how many tokens are to be charged and then it charges these tokens from the user's wallet. So that's the idea, and it has like uh, different protocol level contracts. So there's a fee manager which allows to uh, allows adapt to charge uh, you know a bit more as a fees for, for providing this service, or give the users a rebate also. Uh, the users who are like you know most active on that apps, and then there is Oracle aggregator which basically sources the live feeds data from the uh, changing price feeds. So these feeds look like uh, USDT to Dai, uh, USDT to ETH, Dai to ETH, USDC to ETH, uh, and that's how like you get the price. And so there is a concept of gas price, and there is also token gas price. So with the token gas price, you can identify that okay, this many tokens I need to charge. Uh, uh, here is a sample transaction where uh, the end user was able to swap DAI for a certain token on Uniswap uh, by uh, not paying any ETH, but just paying some extra DAI as a gas fee. So this is the idea. So this transaction, uh, Relayer has paid the ETH fees and the user address is uh, this one where user has paid only like DAI and they have made the transfer to the fee receiver for their die stable coins and uh, this is how like you know this is just one of the use cases facilitated uh, besides that what you can do is uh, you can also have erc20 token transfers you can batch the token transfers and build uh, uh, you know a certain ui where user can send out a batch and a batch of let's say 10 addresses and 10 destinations, 10 different amounts to send USDT and pay the entire fee, uh, gas fee for this batch in USDT by like spending some extra token. So that makes sense in some of the use cases where you are like depositing some liquidity into a liquidity pool, interacting with any method, which already involves, uh, you know, some ERC20 token interactions and by paying the fees also in these tokens, which makes uh, very delightful for the user. And on the UI level, you can still give the option to the user. Okay, these are going to be fees in ETH. These, these are the fees in stable coins and, uh, uh, you know, you choose like which coin you want to pay with. Uh, so that makes a, a good use case in some scenarios where uh, there are already some uh, token transfers involved. 
And third thing is on the cross chain transfer. So currently the problem is uh, like I mentioned in the beginning as well. So between uh, moving your liquidity of uh, certain tokens from layer one to layer two, you want to go to another DAP and uh, uh, you know you want to uh, let's say mint an NFT. So these uh, probably artists uh, do not know how to like uh, you know like like they need to worry about the gas fees they need to worry about like moving the tokens it takes a lot of time uh, and to and also, and also to move back to ethereum to sort of like you know sell back some of your assets uh, uh, it, it takes it is a very long process uh, to like it can go up to like uh, you know hour to a week so hyphen allows you to do like instant uh, transfers between the across the blockchains and uh, uh, it is cheaper and instant so and how it is facilitated is like uh, there are liquidity pools uh, maintained on the both chains and it just like rebalances liquidity and once you like uh, you know decide to like move tokens from chain b to chain a uh, there are uh, you know at, at the back end there are some executor nodes which are going to like listen to your withdrawal transaction and they facilitate the liquidity for you on the other like chain a so that's the idea and uh, you just need to pay like liquidity provider fees or the network fees which can also have like a gasless or like a forward experience where you can pay uh, using those tokens as well so that's the idea here is a simple ui which is uh, hosted as one of the resources uh, i'm going to be sharing this on uh, you know, the channel as well so you can like play with it like between Gordley and mumbai and uh, is soon live on the main net as well so yeah i'm pretty much done and these are like some of the case studies of uh, you know improving the user onboarding on different apps and, uh, and nailing some use cases of trading uh, social use cases uh, DeFi use cases uh, etc in terms of resources you can uh, go through the Bikonomy docs dashboard uh, there are some other resources which we can share on like telegram and discord uh, for uh, you know like i encourage builders to like go through this so i'm done i am ready for the questions i think we're out of time maybe two three minutes thanks Shrag. yeah so we have about 10 minutes left um awesome. just first off would it be possible for you to share those links uh -huh. in the sponsor in the bioeconomy sponsor channel just so people can access them yeah yeah i'll be doing that perfect so there aren't any questions in the chat. I thought I would open up the floor. If there's anyone in the call who wants to jump in, unmute yourself, um, turn on your video if you're comfortable, um, and ask the question yourself. I've got one question that just came in from Gawain, which he asks, does Biconomy interact directly with Venly wallet? Yeah, yeah. So uh, these wallets, basically, uh, you just need like uh, to modify your Web3 provider or Ethos provider, which is like implemented in a specific wallet. So uh, it, it can be done with uh, pretty much any wallet. Uh, any other questions? Okay, we will give people one more minute if they want to jump in. Chirag, mm -hmm. what's the best way for people to ask questions? Um, we, we are on our Discord, so there's the dedicated Biconomy channel. And where else can they find you? Uh, so they can come on Biconomy Discord channel as well or uh, on the Telegram group of Biconomy. So the team is always uh, uh, you know, active there. And is a distributed team so anyone would like come and uh, ask us uh, you guys great so unless there's any last questions um thank you very much Jarag. that was a great workshop really appreciate it i'm excited to see what hackers build using biconomy and if you have any more questions for Jarag or the biconomy team jump in on discord or telegram perfect right. thank you so much Heather. Thanks, Chad. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.